Hey guys, it's King Kank from KingofSneakers.com and in this tutorial we're going to be working on switching out a back tab on these Jordan 3's and I'm going to be using the back tabs from V2 Heat Restorations and he makes them in a variety of sizes um, ages, colors um, so here's what came in the bag he was so kind enough to send me blank back tabs and these actually have the stitching already on them so he's able to send you the blank back tabs with no stitching or you can order them also with stitching. He also custom cut for me these letters H I A and this is what the customer requested. So when I got them um, he did cut them on the water jet so they were a little bit off in color and what I went ahead and did is that I uh, prepped them with a little bit of acetone. I sprayed them with some sand free and I went ahead and coated them with some Brillo uh, white and it took about three or four coats to get to the consistency that I wanted to and all I did is put them on some um, gaffer's tape now these letters that that Billy sends to you they come with an adhesive backing that you can just quickly stick them on uh, to the tab and we'll get to that right now in a little bit he also made me this custom um, hang tag as well. Now this one's a little bit smaller than the the original Nike hang tag. I think the Nike hang tag is like um, uh, two and a half inches by two and a half inches. This one's only about two inches but I think it works better um, as far as scale. Um, and this is something he did special for me. So anything like this you'd have to custom request from B2 Heat Restorations and then work with him with the graphics. Um, this was just plain enough because it's just the fonts. Um, pretty easy enough. Um, and that's something that uh, you'd have to work with him to see if how long it would take to get that done and he can give you a price as well. So what I'm going to do in order to get to the next step is that these already come with some back tabs already on them and because I want to quickly move forward and do it fast um, and I also want to show you um, a step if you were to switch it out this Jumpman one for the Nike one um, so I'm just gonna instead of sanding this off and then just applying the letters onto this one um, I'm going to be using some that he already supplied for me, which he's already so generously sanded here, and you can see that they're already ready to go. And so on here, I'm going to be adding so, uh, the letters what to they this look one. Like once you've uh, see, I'm I going to be uh, I'll just, just stick them on some the gaffer tape, so you guys can see as I um, and then I this. sprayed them all around. And this is what they look like once you pluck them off. You might have to um, make sure to rub away any excess paint on the sides there that may just have built up because I did add a, quite a few coats to it to get it to get this nice glossy finish um, so once you get them you could just stick them down and you might have to position them a little bit You can you can eyeball it. So I just want to make sure that they're in the right spots before I press down. And I will at the end of the video and the video bio, I'll try to. I'll put the notes as to what scale. And so these back tabs, uh, the shoe is actually 11 and a half, and these back tabs are sized specifically for this shoe size. So once you get it centered, you can just press down. So then once you got them on there, you can see what that looks like. Make sure. There on there. So they're going to bend just a little bit to slide into the slot. This 
looks like with the matte finisher on there. So it evens out the sanded portion. This is also this also works if you are gonna sand this off, this, that off, and then you have the sand marks. You just want to hit it with a light coat, some light coats of the matte finisher, and then evens off the finish. Sort of gives it back the luster that's taken away from the plastic. So, okay, so here I have already done the left side. You can see what the final looks like on that one. Switched out uh, the laces for some other ones. Put a little leather lace lock. You can see how that looks there. And so here I'm going to work on this one. And uh, it's going to do a time elapse, but before I get into the quick time elapse of how I'm going to remove this, um, what you want to make sure to do is that you got your tab here, and it's exactly the same size. But sometimes when they manufacture this, it's it's really wedged in here, and it's really hard sometimes to get in there. So before you apply any glue or any do add any of your clear coats to this, I recommend you use, you test fit. You might sometimes have to trim a little here to make sure that it wedges completely in there. So before you do any of the clear coating, so you don't get any fingerprints or anything on there, or or maybe smudge a little for some whatever reason, doesn't dry all the way the way you want it to. Uh, you want to go and make sure to test fit. I'm going to be using an X-Acto knife. Now I'm going to be using a really sharp new blade. Uh, don't use a dull one because what happens is when you start to jab in there and it's dull, it's going to, it might cause you to pull or tug at the strings because what you're going to do um, is basically fit it in there without doing uh, any stitching. And uh, you might get some people that say there are different, uh, that's not the legit way you should stitch it in there. Uh, the problem is that not everybody has access to some of the machines and so this is why I'm showing in this video how you can do it if you just don't have the machine to do it, uh, the patcher or the class one that's like $6,000 to do with a post to do the stitching that goes all the way around here and up there. Um, uh, and this this is just, you know, it, it's, it's a way to do a thing, not, not to say that it's wrong or right, but if you're just starting out doing customs and um, you're really interested in, in in the craft, um, there's nothing wrong with you doing what you can do within your means um, till you're able to afford the bigger machines. So this is a this is a, a sort of an interim way of doing something really cool, uh, really simple to your shoes. Um, even something that you could then offer to your clients is something that you can do as well. And I just make sure to remind you guys these are all from uh, B2Heat uh, these tabs. So the first thing I'm going to do with this one is that I've uh, I recommend Along this edge here, what I did on the first pair is I took some of this glue, the Reina glue. Now, if you don't have access to this one, um, you can try uh, maybe a Bart glue or uh, the, the Infinite uh, glue. Uh, you want to make sure that it's a clear glue that you use because um, you don't want to use maybe the Masters because the Masters is rubbery, but it doesn't really dry clear. Uh, and so what you're going to do is run a fine light coat of glue here and all that's going to do is basically hold the stitch in place as you start to take your X-Acto knife inside here to cut away this old back tab and I have the other back tab uh, here so here's what the other one looks like and so in here you got to try to get into all these stitches and the corners tend to be a little harder because it's shooting into here, into this thickness of leather, and then it's also shooting into the actual shoe. So once you get them stitched and glued on like these are here, you could, if you wanted to add some uh, single stitch, and you can use your uh, Easy All if you wanted to add some additional stitches. So you can take your All if you wanted to, and literally punch a couple a few stitches into here to really make it stable if you want to make sure that this piece um, and this piece hold together as people wear them. Um, 
so that it's really sturdy and things. So that, that's why you this would be a good a good thing to use. This this is also a good to this easy stitcher. You can get it on the website. Um, it also helps you with stitching uh, if you were doing toe boxes because um, this needle is very thick and sturdy. So it's very good when you do the toe boxes. So this is on the website as well. If you guys don't have access uh, to buy it um, from anybody local, so now it's going to go. I'm going to speed up into a time lapse. Um, I, when I started doing this, um, the easiest part to start with is this top tab. Um, and you want to go really, really slow and try not to tug, not to pull, because if you pull, you're going to try to yank out the string and you're cutting it so you might uh, lose the stitching here on the side. So I'm going to quickly go to the time lapse and then um, just chat it. coat on it yet the uh, matte clear coat and then I just want to make sure to test fit before I put any kind of glue on there and you can see that it's a very good fit look at that perfectly covers up everything and then you still have got all your thread intact because you put the glue uh, what you want to do before you do you might um, I don't recommend you use crazy glue because the problem with crazy glue is it's it's it hardens and gets really stiff and sometimes cracks. Um, you do want to use either a Reina glue, um, a Bart, Barge uh, Infinite glue, or like a, a Barge, sort of a, a, a contact cement um, to help you glue this down. Um, you can use sometimes uh, Loctite makes a. a uh, one that's a flexible glue if you need to do sort of an instant hold on some spots um, to get certain spots to hold down. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to coat the back of this one here with the Reina. I'm also going to coat the back of this. It's going to go to a slow tack and then I'm going to slide this in and then wiggle it around in spots.
And then all I did on the front was I switched out the laces to the other ones. They come out pretty clean.